So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the four position for the Seattle City Council um, proposed cartel. And Kim, do you want to get us started? Or are you going to pass it to Tom? Thank you very much for scheduling this discussion. Um, I think it was about a year, perhaps even as long as two years ago, the 34th District... In, oh, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> about a year, perhaps it was even two years ago, the 34th District endorsed a uh, proposal called Streets for All. It was a grassroots effort to improve uh, transit and uh, transportation in the city of Seattle. At that time, the Streets for All group, and there are a number of people here who are members of that, uh, didn't have a specific plan, but they had the goal of improving transportation, uh, pedestrian safety, uh, better transit, uh, bicycle safety for everyone in Seattle. Well, the City Council heard this request, and uh, about uh, nine months ago, we put together a citizens organization to develop a package that we could take before the voters. The state has given us very, very few options in terms of how we fund our transportation improvements. And one of the very few is the vehicle license fee. They allow the city to ask the voters for an increase in the vehicle license fee uh, in order to pay for transportation improvements. So based upon the recommendations that we heard from the Citizens Advisory Group, uh, we now are bringing to you uh, a measure that would allow the city to increase the vehicle license tab by $60 per year to pay for transportation related improvements. And about half of that would go for transit related improvements and there are a variety of improvements that come within uh, the definition of transit. Everything from uh, giving signal prioritization to buses to improving the electric trolley system, converting some of our diesel routes to electric trolley buses, which means they're no longer dependent upon foreign oil, and they're quieter and they're powerful on our hills, to uh, doubling the amount of money for our sidewalk repairs, and also significantly increasing funds for just basic roads and maintenance. Uh, overall, this would be a 10-year vehicle license fee. It would raise about $200 million. Again, about $100 million would go for transit-related improvements, improving the speed and the reliability of transit in the city. What I hear from people is that they want to know that the bus is going to arrive on time. They want to be able to get downtown in about the same amount of time they could if they were to drive alone, but people would rather take the bus. So this is the answer that we have that we're proposing to you, and I'm happy to answer any specific questions. There are a lot of details and specificity with this, but basically there are those categories that I've talked about, about half of it for transit-related improvements, and about 30% to uh, maintenance and repair of our streets and roads, and then about 20% for pedestrian and bicycle safety improvements. And then, did you, David, did you want to speak, or Kim? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tom. Um, I thought it might be useful to give folks some additional context as to why a uh, city of Seattle ballot of this kind and why now. And um, I think there's a great sense of urgency to pass this now. And I wanted to give some context around transportation funding so that you understood why that was why that was critical. Well, first of all, I think we all recognize that Seattle has some outstanding um, transit needs that are are true gaps that need to be met along with pedestrian and bicycle facilities and ailing roads. And why this is a smart decision now is because there is very little money that uh, actually goes to metropolitan areas around the country like ours. And just to give you a sense from the federal side, uh, we're looking at several years of continuing resolutions out of Congress where we've received no new money. And frankly, the federal program is very traditional since the Eisenhower age. Um, pretty focused on highways that's dedicated to states. Um, it, it goes through the process and really only 7% comes to the region directly that would allow for some flexibility. Um, and when you look at the stats on this, we need to raise infrastructure money right now in order to generate revenue and jobs. And we can do that here locally. So for Seattle to get ahead of this, I think is very, very smart, particularly in this economic climate. For example, we know that in the 100 um, metropolitan areas throughout the country, those areas take up 12% of the land, 
are 65% of the population, 68% of the jobs, and generate 75% of the economic activity. So when you look at the federal program and its portfolio, it's grossly inadequate, and the Brookings Institution has been working with a number of other national stakeholders to really move the ball um, to see if we can get there. So in the interim, to have Seattle raise those funds so that in time for a new act, we hope in the next year or two, that's comprehensive, they're ready to go to leverage federal grant money. So it's being responsible by getting in front of it. Similarly, on the state side, um, as you may be reading, there's incredible um, balance shortfalls at the state side, and we know that legislators are now discussing a general fund um, measure that would go to voters next year. That may go in front of the transportation measure, which is also being worked on. Councilmember Rasmussen serves on the governor's Connecting Washington Task Force, which is charged with, with developing a state package for transportation. But again, no certainty that that will come out um, for voters next year, nor do we know how certainty for 2013 for a whole variety of reasons. Further, because of the, the what I described on the federal funding side, the state of Washington, if you look at their state portfolio, they're only compelled to really care about highways. Only about 1% of their funding portfolio goes to non-highway uses. Why? Because it's largely tied to gas tax, which is restricted to roadway use. So it's a real conundrum. Yet we know cities need to turn on the spigot so that jobs can be created, and, and never mind the mobility benefits and the environmental benefits that Seattle is, is promoting, and we're in a pivotal position to do so. Um, transit. Transit um, and local governments have become really um, the bearers of leadership on transportation funding, period, because of what we what we're selling with at the state and federal level. So at the local level then, um, you know, sales tax we know is what's in place for for transit, both for Sound Transit and King County Metro. And while uh, the King County Council thankfully adopted the $20 VLF, the vehicle license fee, it was stopgap. It really helps only the next two years out. We have a protracted transit funding problem. So for City of Seattle to get out front and say, we're going to take half of this money generator over the next 10 years in order to keep the momentum on the transit master plan and a number of other categories for mobility is a huge step in leadership. Further, just to close the loop on why we're here, why now, um, Seattle is, like I say, is in a pivotal position. We're a trade-dependent economy. There's more and more people for the first time in U.S. history in over 60 years, more people are moving into cities like ours. Seniors, people, people who have traditionally chosen a suburban lifestyle are moving in. They expect access to services. And for cities, we need to ensure that we provide that, even in the absence of our other partners, and in a way, as a way to compel them to participate. So that's why I am a strong supporter of this $60 car tab. And I'd like to say also that for those who are worried about the regressive nature of this fee, I too share that concern. And I know that uh, I've conferred with the, the city staff. There's an effort, and they're compelled to do so, by the way, by the council, to look at mitigating measures to try to figure out a way so that folks who are unable to pay that have a, more, uh, a better way to go about it, um, a, a reduced rate, if you will. And there's some legal complications with that that we're trying to work out. So I think there is a solution to that. Um, it's an imperfect tool from the legislature, but it's a tool nonetheless. And I feel like this is now the time to act. So I really encourage your support. Thank you. OK. And now we're going to go to uh, David Miller uh, speaking against uh, the car tab. And David, you get seven minutes. I think I'm going to take seven minutes. All right. Um, I, well. I have been to these before. Uh, my name is David Miller. I'm a proud member of the Fighting 46th District. Uh, I'm even, at least as proud, I don't think I can say even prouder, to have earned your endorsement in 2009 for my city council race for uh, one of the things I'm very grateful for. Uh, I don't disagree with anything that you have heard. We need transportation dollars in the city of Seattle. It is extraordinarily hard to find dollars. The economy makes it very difficult for people to afford 60 additional dollars or 120 if you've got two cars or more than that. This is particularly difficult for our low-income people who are already living at the margins with increasingly fewer dollars helping them from the state, city, county, and federal level. That's why it is altogether critical 
that when we ask our residents to spend $204 million over the next 10 years, the plan respects that spending. The reason I'm against Proposition 1, Transportation Proposition 1, is not because I don't believe we need transit investment, it's because this plan is a bad one. This tax is regressive. The Transportation Benefit District neglected to address that up front. This creates two problems. As voters, we don't know when they do address that. We don't know if that method is fair. The second thing is, is when you go and look at your voter's guide and you are told they're going to spend $100 million on transit and $24 million on roads and 30 whatever it is million dollars on, on those numbers, that, those numbers aren't accurate because when they address the regressivity, they did not budget for that reduced revenue. And so the second you vote on this and they fix this regressiveness problem, you're not getting what you voted for. And to me, that's a real problem. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we have Tim Iman, is because of people's perception that they are not getting spent, that the tax dollars are not being spent what they were told they were going to be spent on. So right from the get-go, when the city council or when the transit benefit district addresses this regressivity problem, we already have a measure that we're not getting what we were told we were getting. And that's problem number one. Problem number two is we're spending $100 million on transit, or nearly $100 million on transit, and we are getting no new bus hours. We are getting no new bus routes. They talk about speeding routes, and indeed, we'll speed more routes. We'll speed 0.89 routes a year. And in a 30-minute bus ride, it's going to save you six minutes. I'm all for creating better transit corridors, and it's something we need to do but we need to do it correctly. We're spending $18 million in this proposal on studies for streetcars. When we have no, when, when people, when, when we talk about that this is regressive, in a lot of ways this is mean as well. And I hate to use that because I respect Tom a great deal and I respect the people who put this together a great deal. But we are, we are pricing this to where people may have to give up their cars because of the extra expense. But we're giving them no new bus hours to get to work. We're giving, we're really building no new jobs because we're spending so much of this money on studies. We know in West Seattle and in North Seattle, really anybody who lives um, south of I-90 and north of 85th, that we badly need sidewalks. This measure funds only nine new sidewalks a year. Just nine. And it's not a double, uh, the number of sidewalks, because we built 15 in 2010. That's unacceptable. We have kids walking to school in the middle of the street because we don't have enough sidewalks, yet this major only funds nine new ones a year. It does fund, however, over the life of this proposal, 1,240 new bicycle parking spots and over 100 miles of new painted bike lanes and bike signage. I'm a biker. I'm a member of the Cascade Bicycle Club. I bicycle a couple thousand miles a year, and I know as well as anybody that we need bicycle safety. West Seattle Blog reported a bicycle accident, a very serious bicycle accident here. And it, it's the Penny Sheriffs on a road that has potholes and cracks. When we spend money on roads and we spend money to fix those potholes, we benefit car drivers, we benefit bus drivers, and we benefit cyclists. When you can get three bangs for your dollar, those are the kinds of things that we ought to be focusing this on. This, month, this spends a fair amount of money on roads, but it will only fix, do 30 spot pothole fixes a year, and only has funds two lane miles a year. Um, there is a great deal wrong with this. It's a great idea. We know we have to spend money on transportation. I'm in favor of that. I'm the leader of, let's spend money on transportation in this city, especially mass transit, especially sidewalks. But this measure is the wrong one. We have to respect Seattle voters. Seattle voters deserve better than this proposal. In 2007, and this is what I'll close with, in 2007, the voters of the, actually the entire state of Washington were proposed a, a roads and transit measure that was imbalanced. And in our wisdom, we voted it down. At that time, they told us, oh, you better not vote it down. It'll never come back. You'll lose your chance. This is the only time you're going to have a chance to do it. What happened? Well, lo and behold, because people knew that we needed to invest in transportation, they brought it back in 2008. It was a better proposal, and we passed it. 
And that's what the Sidewalks and Streets campaign is urging you to do. Vote no on this proposal. Let's fix it, bring it back so that it actually gives us more bus service, more roads and potholes fixed, and more sidewalks, because that's what Seattleites deserve. We deserve better than this proposal gives us. Thank you. All right, thank you all, panel members. And now I want to open it up. We've got about five minutes for questions from the audience. Dan. Tom, I'd like you to rebut me that this is not the proper proposal. This is the uh, proposal that was uh, suggested by the Citizen Transportation Advisory Committee as a broad-based group of people uh, that were very diverse, advocates for low-income people, for people of color, for uh, uh, pedestrian safety, for transit riders, and uh, others in our community. They made their recommendation following uh, a lot of uh, community meetings. They conducted a poll. And they also uh, held focus groups to find out what people wanted. And what people said that they want the city to do is to improve our transportation system, particularly with an emphasis on reliable transit. That is, they want the buses to be able to run on time. Uh, David is correct. There are not more bus hours. But what we are trying to do in Seattle is we're trying to improve our road system, our signal system, so that the buses can get through uh, town uh, more quickly and uh, on time. Now, uh, he disparages the, the savings, but a savings like that every day is quite significant to people who are caught in traffic in their buses. And all of the recommendations that are relating to transit actually came from Metro. They said, Seattle, if you will do this and this and this, you'll have a much, much better uh, bus system in the city. So we took those recommendations from the experts and ones who run the bus system, and that is what would be funded through this package. Again, $100 million for transit-related improvements. And uh, it's not $18 million to study uh, the streetcars. Uh, what we're hoping to do at some point in the future is to connect the two streetcar lines that are under construction now. And uh, this would, only about $3 million would study the possibility of that. Uh, the balance of that would go to extend the streetcar line that's on Broadway now from John to Aloha, which is really important to the Capitol Hill folks and possibly to help pay for some matching funds from the federal government. So the $18 million does go for some construction as well as the planning. But again, we double the amount that is now being spent for sidewalks. Sidewalks are wildly expensive. I looked at the plans for the sidewalk that's going to be constructed on Southwest Cloverdale. That is really detailed and very specific. But it does uh, improve our sidewalks based upon their priorities in our pedestrian master plan. There are critical sidewalks that need to be constructed throughout the community, including in David's, and this will help us speed up that work. I'm afraid if we wait uh, another year, I, I don't know if that will go on the ballot again in another year, and I don't quite know uh, how much better we can make this, because again, over half of it, you know, well, half of it goes to transit-related improvements, which we've heard uh, people want so badly. Only 7% goes towards bicycle-related improvements. And uh, bike improvements tend to be very low cost, but they make a huge difference in terms of safety of individuals who do ride, and also to the convenience of people who uh, want to ride as well. So 7% is not a lot in terms of the overall uh, budget for this, which is over $200 million. All right, uh, that, that was a, a good answer. Uh, it took a while, so we've got time only for one more question right now. That's okay, Tom. It, it would need to happen. So, Dorsal Plants have his hand up. Um, this is a question for David. Uh, I've heard a lot of conversation from the no side in regards to real concern about trust around the money and how the money is going to be spent. This measure includes a citizen's oversight similar to the veterans levy that we just passed, similar to the parks levy. So could you explain why, considering the citizen oversight in this city has been so successful, why in this measure it doesn't warrant trust? Most of you, or hopefully all of you, have a uh, flyer from the Sidewalks and Streets campaign. Uh, go to our website. On the top of the website, there is a link that says the, fi the money, the finances. And in it, we show how the city of Seattle went from a spreadsheet that's this detailed, that shows exactly what people are getting, um, 
remove detail out of it in step two, and remove further detail out of it in step three. When, the, when this was actually passed, there was a motion made that wanted to limit some of, the, uh, some of what the Transportation Benefit District can do in moving around the money. And this was defeated, and, and the comment was made by one of the board members is that, you know, we don't want to do this because we want to be able to do whatever we want to with the money. And, and this is the problem that we have. I worked long and hard to not only on the committee that put together the Parks and Green Spaces levy, but also to get it passed. If you line up the detail of the projects in the Parks and Green Spaces levy versus the complete lack of detail in this population, in this proposal, you can see exactly why, even with citizen oversight, and this is, the citizen oversight is the same, it's the same group as the Bridging the Gap levy, um, you can see exactly why I'm concerned, is we really don't know precisely what they're going to do with this money. The, this disagreement about whether there's going to be $18 million spent on studies or $18 million part of it spent on an actual matching to actually build some streetcar is a perfect example of that. We don't know because that kind of detail isn't in the final legislation. They talked about it, but we don't know. The other issue with the regressivity is if they decide to come up with some kind of proposal to address that between now and the election, where's that money going to come from? That's not in here at all either. And so that's the issue that we have, is we, want, is we believe the citizens of Seattle deserve better. They deserve to know what they're going to get for their money up front and not figure it out after the fact. 